And the more he hurt me, the more I wanted to hurt him back. The more he hurt me, the better it felt. The more powerful I felt, the more he hit me. <laughs> You're very convincing. You're so good though, right? It's almost like I feel like you can rationalize anything. Recently, Andrew Tate had an interview with a psychologist and his channel is going to be down in the description if you want to check it out. And the interview was two hours long and in this video, I compiled small clips out of that whole interview where Andrew Tate shocked or just straight up amazed the psychologist because of his very crazy views. And honestly, I find these clips to be one of the most interesting parts of the whole interview and you will probably as well. Because if you want to learn about Andrew Tate's the real world be sure to check out the first link in the description to join an exclusive telegram group because i bet you won't regret it but yeah guys leave a like on the video and subscribe with notifications so you don't miss the latest updates but yeah take a look at this this was interesting i don't feel like i had time to feel pain or i didn't feel like i had time to be a victim you had nothing but time no i didn't have time what are you talking about because everyone outside still relied on me so i i i when i would get on the phone people would say, is that avoidance though? I don't know. Do you keep busy? Do you avoid your feelings by keeping busy, being I, on the computer all the time? All, all the things I had to do still had to be done. Just because they sure. threw me in a cell, it just made it more difficult, which means I have less time than ever because the difficulty has been increased. And when I would get on the phone, we wouldn't discuss how I'm feeling. I'd be worried about how everyone else is. They'd be like, how are you? Yeah. I'm in jail. What's going on with this? Are you okay? Are your bills paid? Are press hassling you? I was worried about fixing everyone else's problems from jail more than I was concerned about myself or my own mental well-being. And when I, if I felt particularly, when I say pain, pain is, is an awkward one. I don't know if I felt pain because I don't feel sorry for myself and I've developed this mindset of such absolute accountability that even though what happened to me i believe was unfair and even though i'm completely innocent i didn't think ah why i didn't i didn't think why is this happening i didn't think why me i didn't think oh this is unfair like none of these things crossed my mind i was like this is garbage however you can't become the most google man in the world right. without uh with every light has a dark right <laughs> Like, let's be realistic about this. Yeah. I'm thrown in a jail cell. Do I belong here? No, but am I here? Yes. I was pretty logical about it. And I was like, okay, I've got a lot of things I need to get done. And I would feel angry if I couldn't get them done. I don't think I felt pain. Now, I'll admit, I don't sleep very well since I've left. Why? I could, I could admit Do you that. know why? I heard you say in one interview that you have nightmares. I do have nightmares. Yeah. What, are, what are your nightmares about? I don't think they're about anything. I just have like almost like an adrenaline rush out of nowhere while I'm sleeping and I, I shoot up, I bolt awake. No thoughts, no memories, no No visions. real thoughts, no real story. Fear, that's fear. I guess it is, yeah. So there's, there's, so let's just, you know, you're uncon, we would, let's, yeah. you know, the uh, dreams are a reflection of the unconscious. And if you're having nightmares, there must be some unresolved fear that wants to get worked out. I believe so, but then also, I love the idea of that. Of this what? is the, the, the of, what? of having unresolved fear. That sounds like the most interesting thing in the world. If, if someone were to say to me, Andrew, take this pill and your unresolved fear will vanish, I would say absolutely and utterly not. That's not fun. The fun is there's something in my mind which I don't have complete control or complete understanding of yet, and it's not detrimenting my day-to-day -day life really. Okay, I lose a bit of sleep, but this sounds like an interesting journey. It sounds like I'm in a new level of the video game and I've been thrust into a dark forest and I get to do something brand new and I'm 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 really genuinely not worried about it. you're not wor yeah you shouldn't be worried about it it's just where you it. are I'm not worried about it and I'm also not like oh I need to fix this I don't care I'll well, have nightmares and I'll wake up and I'll either go back to sleep or I'll continue to work and that's well, life maybe life will keep giving you situations in which you'll have to confront that fear to resolve it why would I want to resolve it well because I mean if I'm really that tired I'll sleep no but 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 fear creates distortions in our mind, right? I mean, fear is the seed of evil, yeah. right? And so we want to know what we're afraid of because if we block our fear, we're susceptible to bad actions, right? Or, yeah. And fooling ourselves yeah. about what they are, rationalizing. Yeah. So I would argue that it's, it's actually vital for you in the position that you are in and the responsibility that you have to con actually confront your fear in a very real way, which probably goes back to your childhood. I mean, your dad was, I mean, I'm, you know, yeah. the haircut story, and I, I don't know if you want to talk about that, if you're willing, but that's it. You know, when I read that, I'm thinking about that little boy. They must've been fucking terrifying. It is, but I do think I had the best father on earth. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good that came from your father. I'm not yeah. disputing that your father was a good man. Yeah. But when you say he could go from zero to a hundred like that, that for a little boy, it's scary. It's fucking scary. It is. But and I, that fear has to be in you. You don't know what the fuck he's going to do. Yeah, completely. Yeah. But that's, I think that's prepared me for life fantastically. And I of also, course. and I also think the fear. But have you reached a limit? Have, of have tolerance? you, well, of the video game. I mean, you're, you're, you're facing all these charges, right? So something, and maybe this is what you need to go through. I mean, you're on the hero's journey. Yeah. 
right? And this is inevitable in some way, but also along the hero's journey, you have to die to be reborn. That's true. And I agree with all of that. But if I'm genuinely, I mean, I psychoanalyze myself all the time, which is one of the main reasons I don't believe in therapy and psycho, psychoanalysis. Psycho of course you can. <laughs> I, do, I do it myself. You don't think that's hubris? No, I and you think, can know your own mind that you don't need reflection from others to, to see yourself that you I can think, see yourself perfectly. I think that no, I don't think I can see myself perfectly, but I think that life is a perfect reflection. But why I, not get help? Why why not? Like because because then it becomes a crutch. I like the idea that I can rely on myself to fix myself. Well, you have a coach. Is that a crutch? No, it's not because he's teaching me What's something. The difference? That's fine. But like if I had an affliction, I would like to be my own doctor. And I think with your mind, you can do a lot of it yourself. And I think if you have a very strict framework and how you measure how successful you are as a human and I do it through competence and achievement. I say, which mindset do I need to achieve as much as I can possibly achieve? Right. And I can measure that in real time. I can measure that in literally dollars and world championship title belts. I can literally measure the success. Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, well then this is the mindset I need to have to be as successful as possible. Anything that's deviating me away from that needs to be addressed and, and concerned and, and dealt with and I can do that myself. And I think the fear that, if, I, if it's fear that's waking me up from nightmares now, it's just because I understand there's a very big apparatus, a very big enemy, which I cannot destroy and I cannot be coming to get me. Mm -hmm. So I do think that wakes me up. I think the fear is healthy. I think I'd be stupid to not be afraid, but I don't necessarily want the fear to go away because I have no problems feeling bad. Well, it's not about going away. It's coming into deeper relationship with it and, and, and understanding that there's fear that's happening in real time, but there's also fear that may be in your psyche somewhere in your body that's connected to your history. And that may need to be resolved because otherwise you're projecting things out that may, you may not be seeing reality totally clearly. That's the thing, right? Like, is there a way that you're not seeing things perfectly clearly? Well, then we go back to my, what I just said about Perhaps that's true, but if I measure myself purely on competence and purely on achievement, whatever I think and whatever I'm doing is obviously fantastic. So I'm very happy with the mindset I have. And then we go into the argument, which is a level deeper, is am I supposed to be happy? Am I supposed to feel good? No, it's not happy. No, of course, but this is what I don't understand about people, especially men in the world today. Why are they say, so worried about being afraid? Why are they so worried about, I was afraid every time I fought. Yeah. I fought anyway. Yeah. Like I don't let fear guide what I'm gonna do. I do what I'm supposed to do regardless of how I feel. So I don't see anything wrong with feeling fearful. I don't see anything wrong with feeling stressed or under pressure or anxious. All these things men are trying to get rid of. And I talk about men specifically, I gender this because I'm a man. I don't know how it feels to be a woman. But all these things that people are trying very hard to get rid of from their brains, I don't see why they need to Leave. I will argue the point that if I feel anxious and pressured and stressed and fearful, I will get more done than if I was happy. I think if I was happy, I'd just be hedonistic and just wasting my time. I think that you get a whole bunch done with these negative connotations and negative emotions. And I think that life is suffering and pain and you're here to go through it. And you're, and that sooner you get used to the taste, the more successful you're going to be. I have no interest in trying to change the flavor, my friend. The flavor of life is pain <laughs> and I will eat all of it. And it doesn't matter if they put me back in jail or not. I, I'm not sitting there going, how can I be happy in jail? I will sit in jail and say, yes, this sucks. It's supposed to suck. Yes, I'm not enjoying this. Yes, I'm anxious and paranoid. And yes, that guy might stab me. And yes, I can't sleep. And I miss my family. And this is what's supposed to happen to me. And this is how I become the best man I can possibly be. And I'm going to mm. succeed regardless. <laughs> You're very convincing. You're so good though, right? It's almost like I feel like you can rationalize anything, right? It's almost like a trick. Magic trick? Well, you're really good at talking. You're really smart. And it's almost like any question you can turn well, and, 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 and make it work for you, which is great. It's a skill, but yeah. there's also a place where there's the potential. Yeah. for self-delusion. Oh, absolutely. And I'm not even gonna sit here and say that I'm not delusional to a degree. I'm not saying that self-delusion well, doesn't we exist. Are. We yeah. all are, right? Let me give you a very simple example. Let me try and use an analogy. I think the only thing better than having everything you want is not wanting anything, right? So I have every car on this planet. I have 40 mm -hmm. supercars. Most people want a supercar, I have 40. But there's that unique 0.1% of people who genuinely don't want one. And I think that's more freeing than having everything you want, right? So. The, the, the true mindset is not wanting anything. Most people, the best they can do is having everything they want. And I feel like you can kind of do this with the emotions as well. I guess my general consensus is that I don't think I can change or affect the world to the point where pain and suffering and bad things are not gonna happen. So isn't it best if I just enjoy all of that? Doesn't that make me as powerful as possible if I say, oh yeah, okay, this is gonna suck, good. I mean, I do it when I fight. Uh -huh. Yesterday I was fighting, right? We were right. doing 12 rounds and all of us were destroyed. And the more he hurt me, the more I wanted to hurt him back. The more he hurt me, the better it felt. The more powerful I felt, the more he hit me. Because then it's my turn. 
right? So if I can't stop him from punching me and I'll do my best, but if I can't, then surely you should learn to enjoy it, right? And I don't think you can stop life from hitting you. And I don't think you can stop life from giving you unexpected surprises. And I don't think you can stop yourself from feeling sometimes sad or anxious or upset. So I think the best mindset you could adopt is finding that engaging and mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Although I am facing very serious charges and although they are trying to destroy my life and although I cannot sleep the same and although they're out to get me and although I've suffered, part of me is excited. Part of me is like, okay. Why? Because it's a war. Uh -huh. you, you like war. I think all men do. Uh-huh, I do. Yeah, of course, every, all yeah. men do. Yeah. So it's a battle. It's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. So I'm not saying I'm glad it happened because I'm certainly not. And I'm not saying I'm gonna win, but I'm saying, I'm saying that I've trained myself to the point where if I were walking down the street and 10 men were to pull knives on me, I'd be intimidated, but 20% of me would go, this, this is gonna be, this we one to remember. <laughs> do you have a belief that you could take 10 men with knives? I have a belief that, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Because but that's, but that that's is, delusional. That's delusional. Yeah, but it makes me, it gives me a best chance of possibly winning. Well, no, running away would give you the best chance of, of possibly I'm winning. Not, no, and I'm then not. coming back and being safe and then serving out your mission. Of course I, I mean, would run away in that scenario. But, okay. if, I, but if I had to engage them, if I had, yeah, if I had to engage them, right. if I had to fight them, I believe I'd be the most capable if I believed I could win. Of course. So for that reason, if I have to self-delude, then I will self-delude and I will convince myself that I am here to destroy all 10 of them. And I will say it in a way where at least seven of them believe me. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important part sometimes mm -hmm. about all of this mm -hmm. self-delusion is that a lot of other people start to believe what you say. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that I say bad things. If a man were to sit in, in front of you and say, I can rip your head off with my little finger, mm -hmm. and he said it in the right terms, and he truly believed it in his heart, you wouldn't want him to try. As, as ridiculous as that sounds, you'd be like, he's kind of big, maybe. You know, it crosses your mind. So I think that, yeah, I have psychoanalyzed myself, even though I'm not officially, you know, certified and I've decided that I can't stop bad things from happening to me. So instead I'm going to enjoy bad things happening to me and I'm going to build a mindset that makes me fearsome enough to succeed regardless of how stacked the odds are against me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate your mindset and it's well thought out and it's useful to you. And so I'm not, I'm just pushing up against the places where I think there might be contradictions. I, li and I like to hear it. Yeah. I like to hear it. But like, right, like I said right now, I'm not a coward. And, and I want to make this very clear. I'm not a coward. I don't care if I don't sleep again for the rest of my life. I refuse to take any fucking pill and I refuse to sit and have my mind altered by anything I do not control. I don't care if I have nightmares for the rest of human time. Right. As long as I'm in charge of my mind, I'm in charge of my life. If God decides that I don't need nightmares anymore, I'll fathom out how to stop it. If God decides I need to wake up in the middle of the night in a sweat, fearful or afraid they're coming to get me, then that's God's plan for me and that's what I'm going to deal with. I'm not a coward. I'm not afraid of any of these things. I'm not afraid of feeling bad. I'm not afraid of anxiety. I'm not afraid of panic. This is one of the things I think a lot of men out there struggle with is they're so worried and afraid of bad feelings. And, and to me, that's just showing that you've had an easy life. Like there's real people out here who are trying to kill you. There's people out here who put a knife in your neck. You're scared of what? Feeling sad? Like there, there's real problems. What are you worried about feeling sad for? Who gives a shit? I could feel sad for the rest of my life and I guarantee one, nobody would know. And two, I would be monumentally successful regardless. So, who, so why are we even talking about it? I have no fear for a negative feeling. I have fear for me not be able to provide for my children. I have fear for people who rely on me not being provided for and cared for, but I don't have a single, I don't wake up and go, oh, I really am worried if I might feel sad today. Who cares? Who cares? I can be happy or sad on the same day. Nobody notices and the same things get done. Exact same amount of work gets done. Nothing changes. How are you making sense of what's happening to you? Is it God's will? Is it, uh, a co-creation in some way did you co-create this oh no or I'm... are you a just like a victim of of the matrix no i'm not a victim so absolutely everything is i, I in believe some way you're a victim uh, completely but i believe in self-accountability sure i could have prevented this well how did you co-create this if if let's yeah. presuppose you did i, I co-create i created this by being monumentally successful right there's no light without dark equal and opposite force but you said you're excited about it so maybe there's some way you actually wanted this I didn't want this. In fact, I had conversations with Tristan for a long time and I kept saying Icarus to him. When I would decline, uh -huh. I would decline certain podcasts. I would decline meeting certain famous people. I would decline talking about politics. I would decline things and I would keep saying Icarus. And he would say, why are you doing this? And I'd just reply Icarus. Because I knew if I got too big that they were going to come for me. 
I knew that. So I tried to balance it and I felt like I did a pretty good job, but unfortunately I got it a little bit wrong. My fault, I got it wrong. I put myself here. Mm -hmm. But I also don't believe that there's any light without dark. It's yin and yang for a reason. I don't think that I can just become the most Googled man on the planet and become monumentally successful and make hundreds of millions of dollars and nothing bad's gonna come from it. I think that would be hubris. You just used the word hubris, a fantastic word. I think it would be stupid for me to sit there and go, I should be able to do all of this good and have a fantastic life and there's gonna be no repercussion in any form. I knew this was coming to the point where I literally sat with Tristan about three weeks before it happened and said, we're fucked. So why did it happen? It happened because I became monumentally successful and I became monumentally influential and the world is so a you, battlefield. You did, you did create it. In some way you co-created it. Like you knew you knew this was going to happen, and so there may be some way, in, unconsciously, you you wanted it to happen. Like if you're if you're yep. on this hero's journey and you're living this big life and you have a big vision for yourself. I mean, you know, you bring up guys like Genghis Khan, and I think that I think that's kind of appropriate because in another era, you probably would have been one of those cats, right. right? So now we're here, yep. and maybe you need this in some way, need this test to really feel yourself, to know how strong you actually are. I mean, I know what you're saying. I, I don't think I need the test. I do feel like I need to tell the truth. I do feel like What's I... What's the truth? The truth is, well... The truth about the matrix? Yeah, the what, what I believe. And I do believe that I have a responsibility because of my massive platform. Yeah. And I do believe that the responsibility is for me to do my best to educate people in a way that's going to make them happy. Mm -hmm. And I know I could have sold my soul a thousand times and I know I could have avoided this. And I know I could have not said certain things and I understand all of that. I wasn't looking for a war this large. I wouldn't say I was looking for it, but I wasn't ignorant to the fact that it might happen and I wasn't afraid. You didn't do anything to avoid it though. I did, I did a lot to avoid it. Oh, you did? It. I, Icarus, I must right. have said it a thousand right, right, times. Right, right. I could have made it much worse, Yeah. but I was never afraid of it happening. I think, I think there's a difference between knowing something bad might happen and taking the calculated risk and going, this is my journey for truth and this is what I believe is what I should do and being afraid of something. Like I understand if I go into the ring, I might lose, but I do believe 93% chance I'm gonna destroy him. Well, and you want the fight. Either way. I guess so, because how else do you matter, right? That's, that's, that's my point. And I'm not saying that I'm glad I'm being persecuted for false human trafficking inside of Romania. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying that... Yet, on the other side of this, how strong will you be? Okay. Stronger, stronger than you could be otherwise, Completely. that's for sure, and have more power and influence otherwise. Absolutely. And I mean, it's a Nelson Mandela. Uh, completely. And now, so, uh, I wouldn't want to spend fucking <laughs> whatever amount of time in jail. That, that sounds fucking scary, yeah. but it's not uncommon for heroes. Well, exactly. And if you, if you take the lessons from it, and if we want to once again talk about being as formidable as possible, then I don't think jail, okay, it's given me nightmares, but I don't think it's made me weaker. No. And it could have easily made me weaker. I could have gone through the exact same experience with a different mental model and emerged weaker. I believe I've emerged stronger, regardless of the fact that I have nightmares. I didn't have nightmares mm -hmm. before, now I do, but I still see myself as a stronger person. Mm -hmm. That's one more thing I no longer have to fear from an unknown perspective. I know exactly what it's like. I know the best ways to deal with it, which I developed within the three months. And if they put me back, I know what I'm going into. Mm -hmm. So that's a unknown area of the map explored. Yes. And I don't want to go, but I do believe that I'm more powerful than ever. And you have to find the good in it. That's absolutely not Lee for sure but I don't think I was I want to be very careful I, I don't think I was looking for this fight I'm finding the good in this fight I believe that my fight actually has far-reaching repercussions for society now mm -hmm. I think that however this plays out is going to affect society mm -hmm. in real time I wasn't looking for it but I was never did, a f did, you, did you attract it in some way well if you if you are a force for good then the evil is going to attack you isn't it and I do genuinely believe this is the battle of good versus evil in the world today mm -hmm. I believe that truth is always going to be on the side of good I am religious I believe the things I say most people knew were true only 10 to 15 years ago. Yeah. I don't think they're radi radical ideas. And I think that there is an evil force in the world which is extremely deceptive and they are out to try and silence me, not because what I say is wrong. It's in fact because what I say is right. I believe the reason I have so much influence and the reason so many young boys listen to me and pay attention to me is because I say things that are true, that they know intrinsically, evolutionarily, inside of their bones as true. Mm -hmm that I say things which work. People often wonder why my fan base is so feverish, why my fan base is so dedicated. Well, if they listen to me, it's the first time they ever feel good. Mm -hmm. The first time they ever train hard and start to feel better physically and they start to feel better mentally and they adopt my mental model and now they're not stressed or depressed anymore. And then they may start to make some money and they go, you know what? I started listening to Tate a year ago. I'm in the best shape financially, the best shape physically, the best shape mentally. Tate's the man. Mm -hmm. So they're, hyper dedicated to me. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's gonna be a negative to that. I, I've been, I wanna make something clear. I've been brutally aware of the fact that all of this might blow up in my face for a very long time. 
I, I'm not, I've not been ignorant to that. And I think that's why jail didn't cause me pain because I wasn't in jail like, how did this happen? I was in jail thinking, they got me, I knew it. They've been mm -hmm. after me for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I knew they were coming. Is there darkness in you? I mean, there must be. There's darkness inside of everybody. Right, and do you, do you know that part of you? Are you in relationship with it? Do you think about it? That's a good question. First, I have to identify what would the darkness in me be? Well, let me, let me present something to you because I stood up for you after you, you uh, got canceled off social media. And I have a lot of female clients and they had questions about that. I mean, they know me and they trust me, so sure. they're curious. But one of them said, well, you know, Andrew is, he's, uh, he's out there saying that he's helping all these young men. But in the beginning, he made his millions in, in some level exploiting these very men. Okay. That's the frame that they were thinking about it. And is there validity in that, in what they're saying? Because I didn't know how to answer that question. I don't think I exploited the men. I think I exploited, maybe I did exploit the men, but let me change my answer. I don't think me not exploiting them would have prevented them being exploited. I think these men were out to be exploited regardless of whether I did it or not. So, But you can see how that sounds cynical to somebody where you say, well, they're gonna be exploited anyway, so I'm gonna make money off them. And then once I make money off them and I get this platform, then I'm going to champion them. Completely. I mean, it's a, it, I guess that's probably one of the most logical arguments against me I've heard. Then we have to argue whether I was really exploiting them, which is, an, which is another argument, right? Absolutely. Because a lot of these men, the only reason they didn't kill themselves is because they had an online girlfriend. Sure. So I actually think that webcamming and girls as a whole is closer to s therapy than it is porn. Truly, these men are completely miserable and the only joy they have is logging into that work. So I don't think I did exploit them. The reason I said the fact about the fact they're gonna expo be exploited anyway, it's very similar to having an alcohol store. Let's say there's three alcohol stores in a row and all of your customers are alcoholics. Well, if you close your alcohol store, what happens? They just buy it at the next right. store, next door. Right. They're still gonna be an alcoholic. You're not saving anyone's life. Right. But I don't think I necessarily exploited. I, I didn't see myself as exploiting them or exploiting the girls. I don't think that. I think it was a business opportunity and I approached it the way I approach everything, which is extremely professional professionally and I was got good at it and we had a very successful company. Everybody was happy, including the men at home and including the women who all became millionaires. I've turned more women into millionaires than I've turned men into millionaires. But maybe that's the reason they're coming after you because they, they feel in that a contradiction and they're not buying your story, right? They, they don't believe it. They're like, oh, this is an act. He's not genuine. He's actually out for himself. And so that's the place that they want to get you because there's definitely an energy out there. They want to get you. Oh no, they're out to get me. Yeah. And, and I, don't, it's, but it's, it's, I don't think that's the reason why though. Well, depends who we're talking about. Yeah. But we're talking about the matrix. I understand why they're, and you've talked about that a lot in podcasts. We could talk about that, yeah. you know, uh, because you are speaking a lot of truth and you're, you're confronting all the lies in the culture and, yeah. and you're, you're speaking against the, the most powerful forces in the world. But individual women, let's say, yeah. uh, they're gonna look at what you're doing, a lot of them, and and a lot of them, you know, it's, it's, they're completely insane. And they're looking at these little clips and yeah. they, they're, they're distorted in their own feminism. And maybe unconsciously, uh, they can't reconcile to the fact that they would actually want a man like you. I, I think that's a lot of what's going on. It's like projection. I'd, I'd agree with that. You know, and nevertheless, there is an energy that's like they want to get you. They want you to be punished. Yeah. in some way yeah. and so like how, how do you like what do you do with that how do you deal with that like how do you answer to that like if that woman was sitting here what do you say to her yeah i would i would say that her argument to a degree is a logic fail let's let's take it away from webcamming but, but you're, it's a female logic don't be a misogynist <laughs> there, there's your blind spot right there don't right? be a misogynist but that's like saying because well, it's not misogyny you know? no no of course but that i'm uh, that's like saying because you've ever eaten a steak you don't care about animals right. effectively right. So what she's saying is because he had a business in which some man may have felt exploited at some point he doesn't care about humanity which is a logic fail yeah so so that's not valid what i have found in my experience often is that many women who seem to dislike me after they meet me don't dislike me. Mm -hmm. I think the energy which they find repulsive over a screen or affects them emotionally over a screen, they end up liking in person. I think hate and love are actually very close to each other. And yeah. I've had women who, who scream how much they hate me at the screen and then they meet me and they're literally in love with me. Well, you're a nice guy. Of course. 